Hey everybody out there on the internet, so welcome again to another edition of Give It A Shot, Mystery Box Edition. This is the show slash gimmick where I take five DVDs out of my collection, throw them in here, mix them around, dance a little bit, because everyone loves a shaking booty, and then I watch it, and then you watch me be miserable. So today, out of the five that I have, some are returning, some are new. Uh, starting off with uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Goes Green. This is from the uh, 1990 Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon when they had two concurrent running. Uh, this is one with uh, Princess Sally, so it's the darker one. <sighs> yeah, have you seen Sonic Boom? That's pretty dark. It's a dark time on Wii U. Hermie and Friends, Busby the Misbehaving Bee. The only reason why I keep this up is because Don Knotts is in it and I am desperate to know what he sounds like in this. I doubt he'll sound like Barney Fife, but a man can dream. The Donkey Kong Country triple feature, back when uh, Donkey Kong Country was still the hotness and they thought, hey, let's make a CG cartoon. Uh, there's a lot of horror stories with this, so we'll see what happens. Uh, strawberry Shortcake, Sky's the Limit. This is the uh, CG one, so this is pretty recent out of the myriad of Strawberry Shortcake cartoons. I don't know what the Sky's the Limit's about, nor do I care until I have to watch it. And finally, uh, this is the Little Cars Complete Collection. There are eight episodes on this. Uh, if you remember, I reviewed The Great Race. And I'm very curious as to what the other seven would be like, so um, we'll just uh, find out, won't we? Because that, you know, not Mater, maybe he's just as insane in the rest as he is in that first one, so who knows? We'll find out. And now comes the favorite part of the episode, at least as far as I can tell in the comments, where I shake my booty and uh, take a DVD. <laughs> Before I break more equipment. About the way. Well, that was an experience. Uh, this is a obvious tale uh, example of you should be very careful about what you wish for. Because this wasn't the worst thing, but it was kind of heavy-handed. Uh, apparently, Hermie and Friends is a thing by a guy named Max Lucado. He is a pastor of sorts. A pastor, I shouldn't say of sorts. He is a pastor. Uh, <laughs> and um, he does, he has a series of kids things. And I guess Hermes, his big project that he does for the children, for the children's. And it's, it's not the cheapest thing I've ever seen. It's actually for, when, when was this? Um, 2005? For 2005, this isn't the worst computer animation I've seen. I was a little concerned. Oh, I like how on the back, um, they augmented, uh, Busby's hive. Uh, it's, it's adorable, because it's not what it looks like in the, in the, in the, in the short, the, this movie, cartoon, whatever you want to call it. 
40 minutes of Drek uh, that I just watched. It's, um, I was, I was kind of getting the vibe of an ant's life at first before I even put this in and I, I have reviewed that before. That was a pretty big slog through, but this thankfully wasn't that bad. It also um, did not uh, have the same questionable, questionable material <laughs> that an ant's life does. And uh, so, what is this all about? So, the grand premise. Hermie is this green caterpillar, uh, voiced by Tim Conway, because just like everything else, if you want things to sell, apparently you gotta go after some big names. Yes, children know exactly who the hell Tim Conway is, and they sure as fuck know who Don Knotts is. So, uh, they are two, I'm going to call them inchworms. They might be caterpillars. It's not exactly the clearest to find thing, but the way that they scrunch up and down and move, they're either an inchworm or a caterpillar. I'm going to probably say caterpillar, but they are horribly made caterpillars because caterpillars are fuzzy. These things do not look fuzzy at all. Not that uh, I think Fuzzy would have done any better. In fact, it probably made them look worse. But they all live in a garden. It is a community. Uh, there's these caterpillars, some army ants, uh, ladybugs, uh, there's a fly, there's a spider, which I have a lot of questions about the spider. Uh, those are the main ones I can remember off the top of my Oh, there's some other ca other caterpillars as well. I guess they won, so it wasn't like Hermie and uh, like Tim and Don aren't gay together, so <laughs> there's other caterpillars <laughs> because those two are around each other a lot. And uh, this is actually split up into two pieces. There's a short at the beginning. Oh, there's also a snail, uh, not Gary. Uh, as well, I don't remember his name either. I don't remember anybody's name other than uh, the ladybugs and the bee, which we'll get into here in a minute. Oh, nice to see you, Haley. Hello, Bailey. I'm Bailey. She's Haley. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Because they're all just so generic. Uh, so. It starts off with a short, um, which they called, oh, well, they had it on here, The Straight Path, which the short is basically a parable about proverbs. Uh, that's another thing. This is this is Christian made. Uh, so it's a little bit, it's it's not the heaviest handed thing, but it it is, they push the God part hard. You know, Schneider, Proverbs 2, 12 through 15, talks about staying on the straight path. Doesn't make it the worst thing. Uh, sometimes you can do it well, sometimes not so much. Uh, I've talked about that in previous episodes, like in Superbook and stuff like that. Um, but this isn't, this isn't the worst. Uh, but anyway, it starts off with a short of uh, Hermie and... I'm just going to call him Tim and Don because I Hermie just... I want to start to say herpes. Doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, they kind of look like herpes <laughs> when you really look at them. Especially the one from uh, the one. It kind of looks like uh, <laughs> the, the herpes from Dave Chappelle's show. That puppet. But anywho, uh, the short, the straight path is uh, Tim and Don are going down a straight path to go to this party with not Gary for not Gary, and uh, they're on their way, but there's always these distractions. It's kind of like uh, Who Mania, which I just discovered was recently taken down on a sat there for four plus years, and now all of a sudden somebody gets a bug up their ass, pun intended, to take it down, so I'm gonna try and get that redone. That's another project I wanna get done, is get all the stuff that's been struck down uh, or blocked 
um, back up, but I just got to figure out how to go about it. So they're on the straight path and they're telling themselves, you got to stay on the straight path. Sure, Army. Remember what Schneider said. Stay on the straight path. Because distractions lead to bad things and there's uh, skunk uh, that they run into and they get sprayed. And then there's this female caterpillar who's telling them to come up and look at the view and uh, doesn't really work out either. And then for whatever reason, the other caterpillars want to bug the shit out of ants and wake them up. Hey, Hermie, want to come with us and scare the ants awake? Sure. First of all, ants in real life don't sleep a lot. Um, I think they only get, I think ants sleep for like four hours at most, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that. I mean, right in front of me, I'm just going to post how long they actually sleep from some noted uh, website that knows all the shit about ants because they have more time on their hands and they know what to do with. But every time they want, uh, uh, they want to divert off the path, uh, something bad could potentially happen and eventually gets to the point where uh, Tim's like, look, I've done it your way the entire time, Don, and I'm going this way. They, they, I'm gonna go this way and that's what we're gonna do. But this way is shorter. We'll get there faster and we'll have more time for the party. I don't know, Ermy. I've listened to you the whole trip. It's time we do things my way. And they're gonna go, and they, they go this way, but then they find themselves at the edge of a cliff, so to speak, and then it turns into SSX, where they go down, uh, down this slope, and they crash, and they end up at the party. Okay, a couple things about this, and it, and it shortly ends after that. A couple things that, about this. Number one, it took them all damn day to get there. It's like they, at the beginning of the short, it's morning, and by the time they finish, it's night. It takes you all damn day to get to a party? Holy shit. I, I, I know the scale for animals is small, and insects too, but still. <sighs> really? <sighs> so, yeah. Second, they started the day with this veggie dip, which became a bit of a running joke. Um, I would not want to touch veggie dip that's been outside at room temperature for well over what appears to be 12 hours. So what the fuck's up with that? Uh, second, when they crash, that veggie dip goes everywhere and uh, they, they run up with, they run into not Gary who's excited to see them. And I guess the party's in the shell. <laughs> Hermie, where have you been? The dance contest is about to start. I'm like, how on earth does that work? Uh, I don't know if it's like Snoopy's house or what, where it's like it's mag it's a small doghouse outside, but a huge, magnificent palace inside. I don't know. It's got the Doctor Who rules. Who, who cares? It ends with. Uh, Tim falling because he's got cum in his ears as he's beating it out of his head. And then you get your first, uh, first little piece with Max. He's talking to the character, uh, Tim's character, Hermie. Why is everybody always telling me what to do? What do's and don'ts can you think of? Don't climb a thorn bush. Oh, hi, Hermie. About do's and don'ts and things like that and then they get yeah he's not he's not an actor himself max max can do better but they go into the second short or the second the second feature which is all about this busby character i don't like busby i don't need them i'm king of the bees that's right k-i-n-g king I really, really don't like Busby. <coughs> Busby 
is a bee who is kicked out of his own hive and he goes and starts a new one in the garden. Busby is also a greaser, which is what we used to call the... Because when I was at Slippery Rock, when I was an undergrad, there was a small little clique of students. I'd say there was about half a dozen of them that went for that look of like leather jackets and poodle skirts and slick back hair and all that. Like, I had no idea what to make of these kids. But I mean, they pulled the look off. They cosplayed that. They cosplayed that stuff every day to class, seriously. So, yeah, he, we called them greasers. That's what we got here. He's apparently like Elvis, and he has to. He has a couple of quirks that are annoying as shit. One. The Elvis impersonation bit. Don't care for it. I'm king of the bees. I'm fast and I got a stinger. That's right. I'm taking care of bees. Gotta go, gotta go, go, go. Two. He spells the last word he always says. And it's constant. By God, is it constant. I'm collecting pollen and making honey. Y'all like honey? I like honey. I like to drink honey. I like to spell honey. H-O-N-E-Y. Honey. And it's annoying. Three? It's just an awful setup. He, so, Busby doesn't follow rules for shit. Since you'll be living here, has anyone told you the rules of the garden? Rules? I don't like rules. King don't like rules. I'm king of the bees. I get that. And then you find out at the end that's why he's kicked out of his original hive because he just doesn't believe in rules. He shows up to this place and he he's introduced by by uh, Tim and Don about and here's where the here's where some heavy handedness comes in to the Garden Golden Rules which are essentially the Ten Commandments for the Garden. Except they don't read them one through ten, they read them ten through one. Uh, and then number one is obviously follow God. Two is don't open the gate. And then three through ten are like, just basically don't be an asshole. Number ten, no loud noises after bedtime. Number nine, no speeding. Number eight, don't cause others to do wrong. Number seven, don't make a mess. Number six, don't hurt another bug's feelings. And Busby is an asshole. Uh, not only is Busby an asshole, I would rate this. I would rate him as mm, a terrorist. It's it's one thing when he's running around getting shit organized and building his hive by himself, which in and of, in and of itself is impressive that one bee built an entire hive for himself. Uh, so I don't see how he could be that mischievous if he's building his fucking house. But apparently, all of his shit is enough to drive the rest of the neighborhood batty. There's a moment where he's so out there that, um, and this is where like time continuity kind of screws with me in this. He's um, before he uh, before he's formally introduced to everybody, the ladybug. Lucy, that's her name, Lucy. Because she's the third celebrity actress and the voice actor in here. Uh, Melissa Disney. <laughs> I guess she's a Disney? I don't know. Um, I don't know her very well. Well, she has two children, Ladybugs. Haley and Bailey. And uh, they are easily influenced by Busby because Busby don't follow the rules. Because rules aren't cool. I don't like rules. Rules aren't cool. I'm cool. C-O-O-L. I'm king of the bees, baby. I got my own rules. And they want to emulate him. And uh, at that moment, it's more of a, a <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis moment. Because it's like, here's this older dude and these two young girls hanging around him. And I'm like, dear God, please stop. He's so cool. Yeah. Lucy gives Hermie uh, for an hour. It's supposed to be an hour. 
uh, watch these two children so that, you know, she can go do this thing. And this is the longest hour in human history. Like, 24, that television series, the hours in that show were not as long as this. Like, Busby does a lot of shit within that hour. And Hermie ends up losing the children, like, right off the bat. Because those two kids just idolize Busby because he does things that they just find to be so cool. Building a hive is apparently the coolest shit ever. Okay. But he becomes this... Anyway, he builds his hive and then he just runs around and does shit. He's a busy bee with a stinger. And he fucking terrorizes everybody. I still don't know, like... The moment um, you, and it makes no sense in the context of everything here, he bombs, he's bombing the, the army anthills with acorns. I don't know why he's doing this. He doesn't specify why he's doing this. He's just doing it. And it makes no goddamn sense. Uh, the only thing I, I, I note of heroism from him, because he, oh, that's the other thing. He, he, as far as I'm concerned, he sexually molests, not Gary, uh, by swimming in, by, yeah, swimming, flying into his, uh, shell and just beating around in there. I don't, I don't know if he touched his organs or what. It was weird, but he did that. Uh, but the only thing of note that, I, at least the way I view it as heroic, is he, he fucked with the uh, spider, which I don't even know the spider's name. But the spider has his own problems. Uh, by getting rid of his web. Because there's a fly character in this. And I'm pretty sure the fly and the spider shouldn't get along in any way, shape, or form. So as far as I'm concerned, he's doing good there. But I still don't understand why the fuck you're bombing the anthills. We, we get to the, the introduction of rule number two, which is the... Uh, the garden, don't open this fucking gate. And Hermie's like, don't do it. And Busby's like, man, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do whatever I want. I'm a bee, I'm king of the bees. Burr, 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 here's my stinger, burr. Sure enough, he goes back. Not only does he go back, he has the children. Cause again, Jerry Lee Lewis vibes, but fuck it. Opens up the gate and what comes through? A fucking bullfrog. Oh, he's just invited his mass murderer in here. All the bugs should be dead. In reality, the bugs are now dead. Because this frog is going to eat all of them. However, this bullfrog does not eat anybody. He sits on everything. It is the weirdest concept. It is like... He should be eating this shit, not terrorizing. I mean, terrorizing and eating are the same thing. But you should at least be, oh, I don't know. Um devouring these things, but I guess because it's a children's show, you don't want to, you know, show bug parts. Not like an ant's, um, ant's life where, you know, the praying mantis is eating her husband right there in front of you. Or at the end when the geckos eat the newly born ants. <sighs> Damn. Anywho. Uh, the bullfrog, for whatever reason, humps uh, Busby's hive till it breaks off and crashes, to which the ants, for whatever reason, recognize that, you know, Busby's hive has been destroyed. Let's replace it. That be who bombed our ant hill, sir. And what should we do in retaliation, Private Arnie Ant? Mess it up real good, sir? Tempting thought, Private, but not what we're going to do. When Busby sees that all this has happened, he feels bad for the way he's treated everybody. And then he goes and saves the the other bugs because the bullfrog just sits his frog fat ass on the anthill where they're all hiding. And Busby saves the day by stinging them and the the frog jumps back into the pond. That doesn't tell me that he left the you know left the garden, but there you go. Whoopity shit. 
And then you have Max talking to Hermie again at the end, and then, and then there's some outtakes. Uh, the outtakes, I think, were genuinely the most entertaining part of this. Uh, whether it was intentional or not, uh, the fact that the voice actor who was Busby said uh, he was, you know, because he likes Bono so much. I was very excited to play the part of Busby. I'm, I'm a big fan of Bono. Uh, that's Elvis. What? That's Elvis. You're doing an impression of Elvis. Oh, I mean Elvis. Yeah. When it's like, no, you're, you're, you're being Elvis. Like, that's kind of cute. Um, and then the ladybug, Lucy, her husband is this big, massive ladybug. Like, he's huge. And uh, I can see why she likes him. Just gonna leave it at that. Ricky, get over here! Yo. <laughs> Isn't he dreamy? Uh, Story-wise, it's not the worst thing. Like I say, it, it gets a little heavy-handed. It gets a little weird in points. I mean, it's like, God is in this. This is a Christian uh, program, but uh, there's some moments which are like, all right, you might want to tone this down just, just a hair. Uh, first one is with, um, they have the Ten Commandments, which is the Garden Golden Rules. And then you have uh, the, the the parts where Tim and Don talk to God. Hello, Hermie. Hello, Wormy. Hello, God. Uh, are you busy? Sure, but I'm never too busy for you. <laughs> it's one of those things. It's like they're insects, but I know you're trying to use them as an illustration, but. You're gonna have to explain, you know, insects don't have souls. You know, no kid that's gonna ask this sort of stuff. So, why are you doing this? And then God talks to Busby twice. So, you know, God is in this and talking to bugs. Um, so that's a little much. Um, the animation is not, like I said, awful. It's actually decent. I mean, there's certain things that kind of, like, made me cringe or feel bad, like when Tim and Don, uh, Hermes and his buddy, whatever they are, his life partner as far as I'm concerned, walk, they inch, and it, it just looks so disjointed. It hurts me to look at. Uh, it's, it's not the worst thing, but it, it does again that thing that I, everybody, y'all know it, I, celebrity voices. I don't know why you had to shell out the money for Tim and Don. It makes no sense. I mean, because in especially in reality, like the fact that these are two of your main characters and they really don't talk all that much. They really don't. So you're un, you're you're spending unnecessary money on. So I guess Max likes Tim and Don. Like that's who he he grew up with. So that's what he wants. I don't know. But I don't see why you had to spend the money on Tim and Don. Uh, I mean, Don just sounds like he's he's asleep. I think we need to have another talk with Busby. I agree. I love Don Knotts. Don Knotts is one of my favorite actors, character actors, uh, between Three's Company and uh, The Andy Griffith Show. Um, yeah, he's 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 quality, but this he's he's sleeping. It's straight up sleeping. <laughs> it's not good. So the voice acting, um, uh, uh, I mean, it's not awful, but could have been better. Oh. <coughs> story itself, a little heavy-handed, but I guess when you're marketing this toward younger children, <laughs> it makes sense. Um, not, overall, this is not the worst thing, um, but it could have been done a lot better. B-E-T-T-E-R, better. Yeah, it's, uh, 
it's something I could definitely do without. So, what did it get? Two shots, and it was a reluctant second shot. Because it's not the worst, like I said, it's not the worst thing, but definitely could have been better. So until next time, kids, toodles.